going to do. So we're on this new series called Life, Money, and Hope. Let's get right into it. Now, before you get scared, this is not a prosperity message, okay? I, didn't, I don't have a Learjet out in Oxford Airport, okay? Nothing like that's going on. Okay, I just want to let you know because God does want us to be blessed, but our definition of blessing is so, it, it, it's so impoverished. We, we don't even understand as our culture what it means to be blessed. The United States of America has no, no clue in what it means to be blessed. And blessing is so much better than any human understanding can be. And God in, wants you and I to be blessed. Blessed. And we're going to open up right now. This is a little defin working definition, and we'll open the scriptures as well, of course. But blessed, endowed with divine favor and protection, having more than enough material, emotional, and spiritual resources, living in the freedom and the joy of the promise of eternity and our pos position with Christ. See, God wants us to be blessed. So that's what he wants us to be. And it is, does it mean if I'm going through a hard time or I lost my job on an, under a curse? Absolutely not. But God wants us to be blessed. Blessed with him. And so we're going to break this down today. This is what we start a new series on this today. And we're talking about this. And right now I want to bring you to the very beginning of it all. And in the book of Genesis, God tells us how he wants us to be blessed. And he starts off with this. And I will make you, talking to Abraham, Abram at the time, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless, bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. In other words, I'm going to bless you that you will be a blessing. I'm not going to bless you so you can spend it on yourself. I'm going to bless you that you will be a blessing. All right? This is basically, it all starts from the book of Genesis. Now, let's go back and look what God says to Abram. By the way, Abram was his name until God changed him. Exalted father, it means father, now he, exalted father to Abraham, father of many. So God changed his name. And God wants to change your name too. I don't know what you've been called in life, but what God says about you is what really he thinks about you. And he's about changing your name. You are a son and a daughter of God, and it's important to know that. Now, the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country. Let's just stop there for a second. In other words, go from your culture. Are we willing to leave our culture? Are we willing to leave the American dream? Are we willing to leave, leave that aside and follow God? That's what he's telling him. I want you to leave your country. Your dwelling place. Your economic system that you have been a part of. I want you to leave it. Okay, go from your country and your kindred, your family. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. You know, the Bible says blood is thicker than water. I never can leave my family. Yeah, his blood is thicker than any family water. Now, I'm not suggesting you leave your family. But for Christ Jesus, anyone that puts mother, father, sister, brother over me is not worthy of me. However, at the same time, it says he does not take care of his own. It's worse than an infidel. So there is responsibility for our families. But if they take, if they're superior to Christ, there's something wrong. You are, you're under, you're, you're functioning in a place that's broken, okay? Go from your country and your kindred. So your family and your nation and your father's house to the land that I will show you. In other words, I want you to step out on faith. I'm not going to tell you everything you need to know. You got to trust me in this. Okay, we're not done. It's more. And I will make you a great nation. Ethnos. Nation means ethnos, okay? And I will bless, everything I share with you, blessing, that's what it talks about. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will spend it on yourself and have a great retirement package and move to Florida or Arizona. Better, better than that, San Diego. No, it doesn't say that, does it? No. It says, I'll make your name great so that you will be a what? Blessing. Blessing. That's correct. God never blesses us just for ourselves. What good is a party by yourself? 
right? God blesses you and I to be a blessing to the world. Now, you say, well, I, don't, I, I have a hard time with that. Well, look at this. We continue to read this, okay? We're not done yet. There's more to the Abrahamic covenant. I will bless those who bless you, all right? And him who dishonors you, I will curse. Well, I don't like that. I do. God, you take care of the person. I'm not going to curse anybody. Say, Lord, you take care of this person. I'll leave it in your hands. I'm not going to worry about it, okay? I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So the amazing thing is, God blessed Abraham to bless the world. And guess who's here as a result of that blessing, everybody? You and I. Now, let's just stop here for a moment. Very important we understand this. Have you ever noticed how the Jewish people are blessed? Unbelievable, right? Why? God's blessed them. And that's why, even if they don't follow Jesus, they're blessed. They tell their children, you, you are blessed. They work together. They want to start a business. They all work together, and they make it happen, right? They bless each other. They bless their children. And look what God has done through them. I mean, there's a small segment of the population from Einstein to Jerry Seinfeld. You have Jewish people. I'm not going to mention any financial people because I don't want to be accused of anything. But some of the wealthiest people in the world and the most influential people in the world are Jewish people. The best oranges come from Israel. And part of the reason you're here this morning is because of the developers of Waze are Jewish. That alone is worth its price of gold. Okay? Praise God for Waze. All right? As I said last week, Jesus was here. He said, I am the Waze. I am the truth. I am the life. Okay. <laughs> I will keep you from the police. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We love the police. All right. It's a good rock band. Okay, let's move forward. I will bless those who bless you, and in him who dishonors you, I will curse, uh, I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, listen, I, I think we know this. I think the airline industry has taught us about blessing. For example, it sounds like the most selfish and the most horrible thing. They, this is what they say. You're going on an airplane. They tell you, by the way, if we, if we crash. And that's the last thing I want to hear when I go to the airport. Why do they call airports terminals? <laughs> Makes you think, doesn't it? Could they call something else? Terminal, really? And so I heard of a woman that was afraid to go on the airplane. She said, I will not go on the airplane. Why not? Because the Bible says, lo, I am with you always. So, thank you so much. Uh, so you're in the airplane, right? And, and, and the stewardess or the stewarders, or whatever they name, they call them now, uh, they get up there in the microphone and you're trying to you know, get the thing to work, and they talk about what you have to do if we lose cabin air pressure. You know the drill. What do you got to do? Put the what on yourself first. Put the mask. I'm like, what, are you kidding me? They're telling me to forget about my kids, let them die, and put the mask on? That's ridiculous. No. The reason why they say that, because if I can't breathe, I can't help others. Right there is the Abrahamic covenant through the stewarders. If you can't be blessed, you can't bless others. You gotta be healthy enough to bless others, right? That's God wants to bless you so you can bless others. He wants you to put the oxygen mask on of heaven so you can breathe in the atmosphere of heaven and change the area of your lungs. Though the cabin pressure of the world is way off and is going out, you can put on the atmosphere of heaven and, and begin to help others get the atmosphere of heaven. And no matter how bad things get, no matter how bad the cabin pressure gets in this planet, we breathe of a different environment. How does that happen? Well, in Galatians, I want to show you very, very, very important we get this. All right? This is the whole beginning of all series. Everything's predicated upon this, these truths. Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. That's brilliant. That's what God asks us to do. He's not asking us, get your act together, you know, make sure your finances are okay, your kids behave, make sure you have kids, make sure you don't get married, make sure you get married, make sure you get a job. It didn't say any of that. What does it say? How to get blessed. How do you get favor of God? It's absolutely brilliant. It's the most brilliant thing in the universe. All he's asking us to do is believe in him. That's it. That's amazing. You see, just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteous, know then that it is those of what? 
faith, not good works, not being smart, not being an Oxford scholar. No, none of that, Rhodes scholar. It is those of faith who are the what? Sons of Abraham. What? You look at a girl, look at a woman and say, you're a son. Just stop right there when you say it. You're a son. You're a son of Abraham. Well, how can that be? Well, I'm, I'm called the bride of Christ. So ladies, get over it, okay? It's okay, you're called the son. Why are you sons of Abraham? You know why? Because in the Old Testament culture, women had no rights. And so only the son got the inheritance. So what the Bible's saying is, all of you are sons and have rights to all the privileges. And as we continue to read here, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles... Okay? This is way back when. God sent Abraham not just for the Jewish people. He sent them as a conduit to bless the world. Why? Because he was willing to believe God. He was willing to leave his family, his country. He was willing to leave all his wealth behind. Says, I'm going to trust God. And the scripture says, for seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel before him to Abraham, saying, in you shall all the ethnes be blessed. So then, listen to this, it's important. So then, those who are of faith in Christ are what? Blessed. So you're blessed. If you are of Christ, you're blessed. You see, the enemy's job is he's a liar, he's a, he's a thief, and he's a stealer. And the greatest thing the enemy does in our lives to trip us up is to get us to believe lies. If he convinced you that you're not blessed, you're not called by God, you're not good enough for God, if he can get you to believe that, then you'll walk in poverty. And poverty, not in the, set, not in the American dream or G, GDP. I'm talking about poverty of mindset. And so if he can get you to believe I'm no good, God can't use me, no. The truth of the matter is all the promises of Abraham are ours in Christ Jesus that we can walk around and be blessed like the Jewish people. Why can, how can you say that? I'll tell you why. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith, now we're not done, for in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Not by going to school, not by coming to church, not by paying your tithes, not by giving to the poor. No, by how? By, for in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now listen to this. By the way, the context of this is salvation. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave or, nor free. There's neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's why we don't like totem poles at this church. If there's ever a totem pole, we kick it over. Why? Because we're all equal before the cross in value. Do we have different positions? Absolutely. But we are to serve each other, not serve over each other, and be something bigger than somebody else. If I ever hear someone say, well, pastor, they're just baby Christians. Excuse me. Who made, you know, we got to stop all that, right? And I thank God we're not that way. We are a family. We work together. Yeah, you might be a little older than a little junior, but we got to help each other out in grace because if not for God's grace, you'd be a little child too. we got to work together as a family, right? And this is what it's all about. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Now listen to this. And this is the, here you have all the variables of the equation. Now comes the equal signs. If it's, if it's this plus this plus plus, it equals this. What does it equal? Here are what it equals. And if you are Christ's, then you are what? Abraham's offspring, okay? Heirs, according to the prompt. What is an heir? An heir has the rights of its parents' estate. So all the promises of Abraham are ours in Christ Jesus. Okay, all the promises of Abraham are ours in Christ Jesus. Jesus, okay? Very, very important we understand that, everybody. That's huge. If you understand that, then all the promise of Abraham are ours in Christ Jesus. All the blessings that God has given the Jewish people are ours. Now, let me say something very, very important. From the book of Romans talks about this. The Jewish people are still important. We don't believe in replacement theology, that we take over the Jewish nation. No, we are the second born. The first born is still the first born. 
And so the Jewish people, by and large, that have not accepted Christ, is like an older brother that has walked off on his own. And we that are younger have accepted him. Our job is to go after the father and pray for the older brother. That the older brother will come back. So this nonsense of replacement theology is anti-scriptural. Read the book of Romans, which, man, we need to do a series on Romans, which I think we're going to do next year. I'm excited about it. Go through the whole book. All three of you like it. Okay. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. That's amazing. All the promises of Abraham are in Christ Jesus. Okay? All the promises of Abraham are ours in, can we say this out loud? All the promises of Abraham are ours in Christ Jesus. Okay? Understand that, everybody. Stop looking at yourself by yourself. Start looking at yourself through Jesus Christ. Please understand that. Yeah, you're a mess by yourself, but guess through Christ you can do more than you could ever ask or imagine, okay? We're blessed, by the way, to be a blessing. We're not blessed so we can have the American dream. We're not blessed so we can get bigger barns and gather more stuff and retire and say to myself, myself, you've done well for yourself. Jesus talks about the parable of a man that says that. I'm done well for myself. Let me build bigger barns for myself. And it sounds like, wow, he's got a 401k, he's got a retirement plan. I'll say to myself, self, you are blessed. You know what Jesus says? You fool, your soul will be demanded of you that night. So Jesus basically takes the entire American system and kicks it over. Aren't you excited you came to church today? <laughs> yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with wealth. But what do you do with the wealth? We are blessed to be a blessing. Okay, the Dead Sea, before it was dead, was sick. Okay, and what happens with that is when all the provisions go into some place and there's no outlet, it becomes sick. A church that becomes ingrown gets sick. A person that just thinks about itself gets sick. You see, before we get to all the violence and all the horrific things we're seeing in our culture, when you become selfish and self-absorbed, that's where wickedness is birthed. That's the incubator of wickedness is selfishness. All about me. I want my needs met. That's when it's a problem. You see, in order to be a blessing, we need to be free in Christ and continue to get free. So, how do we get free? Well, we, first of all, we need to change our society. It says in the book of Proverbs, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Have you noticed that our country, do you know what I just read a couple of years ago, I need to update it, but they say that if we're going to actually look at our government, it's, it's the, the numbers blow your mind. A trillion dollars, I can't even begin to think about. It's like taking $100 bills, stacking them up, going around the moon and coming back. I mean, that's how, that's a trillion dollars. It's incredible. But let me break it down. Imagine you're making $80,000 a year, but your expenses are $128,000 a year. That's what we're doing as a country. Okay, 80 grand you make and you spend 128, and every year you spend more. It's, I don't know, that was a couple of years ago I read that. It might be even more now. It doesn't work. And so if you're buying things you cannot afford, and you're living a life beyond yourself, you're like, you're like this. And you can't be generous because you're too much in debt to society, right? So the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a slave of the lender. Now, it's okay to leverage debt for certain things, but when the debt is leveraging you, that's a problem. You see, it says in Romans 13, 8, Oh, no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And when you love each other, you're not all about you. You think how you can bless each other. We're blessed to be a blessing. Let me talk about God's truth about wealth and provision, okay? A lot of times the people preach about, you need to tithe, you need to give, you need to give 10%, you need to give offerings above and beyond, and God will open the windows of heaven. I believe in all that, 100%. However, if you tithe and you give, praise God, your heart's better, but if you're spending more than you make, you're still not gonna make it. Okay, so if we, it's like, almost like nailing your foot to the floor and trying to go someplace, you can get nowhere. Let me do that again. Okay, Woo. I'm getting too old for that. I got dizzy. 
And my wife didn't even kiss me. I still got dizzy. Okay. Um, but think about it. You can't move. But if you have generosity, okay, and, and good stewardship, you can walk. So we've been teaching the church for a long time. Just give, 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 give. <laughs> right? Gimme, give gimme. Give but what happens if you don't wise, if you're not wise with your money? So let me just say something really, 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 really profound. It's so profound that if our country would do this, and I'm not running for office, thank heavens, spend less than you make. It's real simple. And it's all God's. Spend less than you can make. That's, that's what we're called to do. You see, we give to give more, not to get more. Ushers, please get ready. <laughs> you need to buy a vow. You give me a thousand dollars, and God will give you ten thousand dollars. I'm going to show you a little video now of a woman from South Dakota who gave her last thousand dollars. She had no more medication to take. Her blood pressure medication was gone, and she gave a thousand dollars to our ministry. And now look at her. She's flying in a Learjet. I mean, that's, that's stupid, everybody. Okay, that's just, that's wicked. It's disgusting. Even Benny Hinn has admitted that he was way off base with the prosperity gospel. It's sick. It's making God nothing more than a slot machine in Las Vegas. But we're saying every time you pull the handle, however, it always comes out with three lemons. Well, how do you know about slot machines? That's for another time. Okay. <laughs> how do you think we pay for this church? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Never will we do that, okay? We give, unless you win, then you can give to the church. We give to give more, not to get more. You see, there's two legs of living a blessed life. The first one is generosity, okay? I think we got that pretty much, being generous, Here's another one, but let's talk about generosity a little bit. Acts 20, 35. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said. Okay, now, you think what Jesus says is important? Okay, thank you. It's more blessed to give than to receive. I'm telling you. I'm t listen to me. I I'm, I'm, not, I'm, being, I'm joking around a lot, but I'm being dead serious here. Selfishness is toxic and will destroy your life. Selfishness is the biggest problem in marriage. It's the biggest problem in the church. It's the biggest problem in churches and companies. Selfishness is toxic. Selfishness is demonic. It's the seed of witchcraft. Because it's all about me. I. It kills you. Selfishness. It, forget about all the sins. We, we talk about all oh, the homosexuals or oh, these people, or we talk about all these. No, forget all that stuff. It's nothing. When it's all about you and what you want, that's the seed of the sin, everybody. Okay? Why can't a little 11, why can't a 13 year old in California draw a map of a school and get a bunch of ammo? Thank God they caught him. And even think of doing something like that because he's selfish. I'm not getting what I want, so I'm going to take everyone with me. And I don't believe in God. It's all about me. I suffer, so everyone else will suffer. That's demonic, everybody. Can you see what's happening in our culture today? You know how you, you, know how you get break the back of sin? Besides getting your life to Christ, it's become generous. Bless other people. When you meet someone, instead of worrying what they're going to think about you, why don't we just try to be a blessing to them? Blessed give. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So we have generosity. Now we have stewardship. What is stewardship? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Because Mr. Webster tells us, the conducting, supervising, or managing of something especially the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Okay, in other words, everything we have, we don't own. The Bible says your life is not your own. You've been bought with a price. Glorify God in your bodies. Okay, everything you have. So everything I have, I'm, I'm entrusted to. 
That's good news. I, I, I'm a homeowner. I'm not a big fan of being a homeowner. I just not. I probably, if you ever need any home improvement, do not call me. I'm terrible. <laughs> with a hammer, I'm dangerous. You'd rather have the Taliban at your house than me with a hammer. I'm terrible. Okay? Uh, but when you rent, it's wonderful. If something breaks, uh, yes, the uh, kitchen sink is leaking. Thank you. And they come over and they fix it. When you're a homeowner, the kitchen sink is leaking. That would be, that'd be $2,000, sir. Okay? So it's so much better. Listen, God owns it all. How a wonderful thing. When I get stressed out occasionally by the church and stuff, I go, God, hey, hey God, you know what? This Cornerstone Church, it's yours, not mine. You're going to have to provide. God, these are your kids. I'm just stewarding them. You know what that does? That takes so much pressure off of you, and now you're working with God instead of for God. A whole lot better. So in Genesis 12, 1, sorry, Genesis chapter 1, the very beginning of the Bible, we see about generosity and stewardship, okay? It's all that way from the very beginning. Before sin entered the planet, man still had a job. Mankind had a job. Working is not a sin. Okay, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them. See that? Blessed. He always, from the very beginning, he blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and what? Subdue it. In other words, I want you to rule over the earth. The Bible says that Adam named the animals. And to name something in the biblical understanding is to give assignment to, is to describe it's, it's who it is. You, he actually helped God in creation, okay? I want you to subdue it. What happens to us? We're subdued by the world. My house owns me. My car owns me. My college debt of $300,000 owns me. And I'm working at Chick-fil-A. I didn't mention Chick-fil-A today. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Rule over, everybody. Our job is to manage God's creation, not his creation managing us. And unfortunately, most of us, and this is not making you feel bad, most are being managed by our debt. And if you're, if you're there, there's hope. Okay, we're not here to beat anyone up. We've been sold a lie. Go into debt and be happy. Stewardship is easy when you know who the owner is. You know who the owner is, everybody? The earth is the Lord's. You came this morning because someone took ore out of a rock and melted it down and made your automobile. But guess where it came from? God's earth. The air you're breathing comes from the, the, the equations God has set up through photosynthesis and the exchange of molecular structure. I like saying that. It makes you feel like I'm smart. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and its people belong to him. Okay? Please understand that, everybody. I don't own anything and neither do you are. Neither do you. You are a steward. And if, if you're a steward, how much better? God is with you in it. You see, this is the issue. The supply plus is the answer to the need. Jesus leaves and puts us in charge. He says, all authority has been given to me, and now I give it to you. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in teaching them to observe everything I have taught you, and I'm with you to the end of the age. What's that all about? God's will and provision, but there's a gap. They're the needs of the world. How do we break it? You are the light. You're the hope of the earth through Jesus Christ. Jesus made the pathway to heaven to earth, and now you and I are doing supply runs. The highway's been built. We're doing supply runs. Are you unloading your truck? Are you driving it around full? What happens if you get God's blessings and unload it and help other people out? Then you go back up again, God will do it. Reminds me of something that happened recently. I was at a food establishment. And we were having waffle fries. 
even though they're in a lot of hot, hot water, what they did recently. But nevertheless, I'm having waffle fries. And I asked my son, may I please have a waffle fry? Hey! No. Could I, have a, could I have a milkshake? Absolutely not. Give me a waffle fry. Now, what happens if my son goes like this to me? Dad, I really appreciate your benevolence upon me. Thank you for working and doing what you do. And I, I thank you for these fries that you've allowed me to, to provide myself. I put a little salt and a little the, the sauce on the little yellow sauce. I love the yellow sauce. And Dad, Dad, thank you so much for that. And out of my benevolence and my appreciation to you, not only am I going to give you a, a, a waffle fry, but I'm going to give you the whole thing. Now, if he does that, I'll take a loan and go into debt and buy the whole establishment. Right? <laughs> so that's the, the God's will and provision, and you are the need. So if God can trust you, he'll give you more. Not to spend it on yourself. God, that is horrible, everybody. Selfishness is so bad. That's the problem with sin. So, I have to get more. We become like drug addicts. I have to get a fix, and I'll do anything I can to get a fix. The supply plus you is the answer to the need. It takes generosity and wise stewardship. Not just tithing and giving and being generous, but stewardship It being wise. And we're going to talk about in the next several weeks. We have a book outside for you at the information desk. It's called Beyond Bless, which talks about how to move beyond being blessed by Robert Morris. Great book. It's free for you. Take it. Take one for family. Uh, let's move forward. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with very much. I was just reading in Forbes magazine, which is not normally a Bible uh, scholarly thing about the Bible, but I was reading an article, and, uh, and there was a, a whiz kid there that's... that's in the stock market and trading. And this is what he said in the article. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. I get my financial guidance from the Bible, said Greenwich, the author of Confessions of All Street Whiz Kid. In a prepared statement, this is what he said. Money and possessions. By the way, he was depressed and going through all kinds of problems, and he found out the truth. And this is what he writes. Money and possessions are the second most referenced topic in the Bible. Money is mentioned more than 800 times and the message is clear. Nowhere in Scripture is debt viewed as a positive way. Greenwich also said in his years as a highly successful Wall Street stockbroker, let him spiritually depleted and clinically depressed. Says the Bible is an excellent financial advisor, whether or not you are religious. Okay? The writers of the Bible anticipated the problems we would have with money and possessions. There are more than 2,000 references... He says, our whole culture now is built on the premise that we have to have more money and more stuff to feel happy and secure. Public storage is the poster child for what's wrong with America. We have too much stuff because we bought into the myth fabricated by Wall Street and Madison Avenue that more stuff equals more happiness. He adds, that's the total opposite of the truth and the opposite of what the Bible says. And what's Greenwich's number one advice? He says this God owns everything. You may have bought that house, but He gave you the money to buy it, so it's His. I mean, that's, that's amazing. My friends, if we get that in our hearts, in our minds, am I trying to get your money? No, I am not trying to get your money. Is Jesus trying to get your money? No, he's trying to get your heart. How do we build this church? It wasn't by your money. It was by God's money. God gave you the ability to do it. This is not about money. This is not about raising funds. This is about setting yourself free to be what God has called you to be. You see, this is what Jesus has to say. So if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? What does that mean? True riches is not worldly wealth. How many of you have been on a mission, mission trip? Yeah, my first one, Guatemala. Go up a two and a half hour hike, go to the top of the little village as a little kid with a stick with a rock, smiling ear to ear. I wrote in my journal, these people are the richest people I ever met in my life. They're so happy. It's not about stuff. It's about God 
It's about people. And so, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who would trust you with true riches? True riches is happiness. True riches is knowing God. I mean, I, if I look at my kids, I can't buy them. There's nothing you could, I, you could not pay me all the money in the world would I be willing to part with my children for money or my wife. I'm wealthy. Way beyond worldly wealth. Why talk about money in the church? That's the reason why. There's 100 verses in about prayer. Okay, we get the idea. Okay, the Bible talks a lot about money. This is what Jesus says. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal and where the government taxes you so bad. Oh, that was not in there. <laughs> but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in. Listen, you can't take it with you, but you can send it ahead. Whatever you do for God, in love, and you take with you to heaven. I don't know about you, but I want to have a heavenly account that's full because I'm doing it for God. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, it's interesting you read that. What he's basically saying is put your money where your heart is. Or put your money where it should go, and then your heart will follow. Put your money where it should go, then your heart will follow. If you want to care more about missions, give to missions. You want to care about the poor? Give to the poor. Why? Okay, you want to know why? Okay, buy some stock. Put $5,000 in a stock, and look how you will start watching the ticker wire. Oh, what happened now to Apple stock? Okay, you'll be watching it because your heart is there. So Jesus talks about that. For where your treasures, that's where your heart will be. So where's your treasure? Where's your treasure? See, generosity is extremely important, yes. But stewardship, we're going to get into the next couple of weeks, stewardship, how you steward what you have. And we are blessed to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. How refreshing is that, everybody? How refreshing. And this is what, as we conclude, you do not have because you do not ask, the Bible says. So you need to start asking God, Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. Give me the ability to be blessed. Okay, but we're not done because this is out of, if you take the scripture verse out of context, it's not good. People quote this all the time. You have not because you ask for not. So I need to ask God. No, let's read the whole thing. What causes quarrels and what causes fight among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? Can I hear an Amen. You bunch of sinners. <laughs> you desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because why? You do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. Why? To spend it on your passions. Okay? God wants to bless us. What you think you own, you do alone. Do you want to do this alone? I don't want to do it alone. God wants to utilize us. This is the truth, everybody. Remember, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. You know what the judgment seat is? It's called the Bema seat. The Bema seat was the place in the Greeks where they had the Olympic Games of their day, and they would evaluate how a person did athletically and give them, uh, they give them rewards accordingly. One day, you and I are going to give an account, yeah, even if you're saved, how you lived your life. Remember, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For the scriptures say, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me and every tongue will declare allegiance, praise to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. I ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes.